That is great because it's really dependent on your area and if you're really skilled at it, you study your market, you know what people want, you make a lot of money where another host doesn't. maximize as an Airbnb host? So how to maximize your profits as an Airbnb host? That is great because it's really dependent on your area and if you're really skilled at it, you study your market, you know what people want, you make a lot of money where another host doesn't. I have a high occupancy on my Airbnbs where other people in the market have a very low occupancy and I get better rents than other people as well for very basic reasons. One of the reasons is, is quality beds and quality furnishings. Doesn't mean it has to be expensive. It just needs to look good, look clean. It needs to be clean. And the bed needs to be of good quality. You don't need the most expensive bed frame, but it needs to look nice, be sturdy, but the mattress itself needs to be really good. The people want, care about the mattress, they care about their hot water, how clean the place is, and how strong your internet is. That's gonna give you more listings, more consistent listings. Now, how do you maximize your profits? One of the ways I do it is I, on my 16 unit, and let's just say you don't have a 16 unit, so I'll give you another example. I have a client that has a four unit property that they're looking to make an Airbnb. I told them, rewire the property so you have one internet bill, one cable bill. And all of the units get fed off of that one bill. So instead of paying $150 a month for four units, which is $600 a month, you would pay $150 a month for one unit. Now that $450 you're saving a month, if you're on a five cap market, we're talking about an additional 20 uh, per, so you're about $90,000 in value. And you're making an extra, you're saving $450 a month. So money saved is money earned. In that one scenario, you're saving you're you're, you're saving over five thousand dollars a year. So this is an extra five thousand dollars a year in your pocket. Another thing that I do is instead of having four water heaters, where an average water heater will charge you thirty to fifty dollars a month in electric, I don't have four separate water heaters. I have one water heater for the full building. I get a commercial grade tankless gas water heater, and I have one gas meter feeding it. Because I'm gonna pay all the utilities for my Airbnbs, it doesn't have to be split. So now I'm providing hot water that's instantaneous, it's gonna satisfy the client. And at the same time, because I'm not paying $140 a month extra in electric, I'm only paying $35 a month for gas. I'm saving there $105 a month, which gives me an extra $1,200 a year. And it's also increasing the property value another $20,000. So the different things I just mentioned to you, increase the property value $110,000. Now you might say, Pascal, it's a four unit property. What are you talking about? How is it increasing $110,000? Because it doesn't work that way. In the commercial world, when you're buying commercial properties in an Airbnb, fourplex is gonna be commercial property. If you're selling it in the right area to the right buyer, you're gonna be selling it as, a, as an Airbnb, as a commercial property. In that scenario, it goes based off of your cash flow. I have a fourplex in a market. I, I've told you this story before, it's about $180,000 about this fourplex. I would say today it's worth a million dollars. And it's only been eight years, but I, it's in an area I can Airbnb in a great market. There's another fourplex they just built ground up with a pool. They're selling their property I believe it's a 2,000, 2000 square feet. They're selling their property for $2.2 million. They've also already been offered 1.8 million and they declined it. So that's another fourplex. Because it's an Airbnb property and it's run as an Airbnb property and all the performance is based off of that. They're asking for that and they're selling it by a commercial broker. So there is money if the business is done properly. So those are uh, some, some great ways to, to increase your profitability and to increase client retention and satisfaction.
Should I invest with my girlfriend? Uh, the question is, what do you plan to invest in with your girlfriend? Two, how long have you been dating? Three, are you planning to get married? Four, what are each of you providing to the deal? Boyfriend or girlfriend or perfect strangers that eventually get to know each other and then invest each other. They're both the same scenario. We have to see that there's both partners can provide something to the deal that can help each other and add value and that you're going to be able to trust each other for a very long time. So if you guys break up, are you still going to be on good terms to be able to work together for, for the good of all? And if it's yes, then you can consider it. But if it's no, and you're like, well, if we break up, it's really going to be awkward. It's going to be a problem. You know, something bad could happen. Then the answer would be no. Okay, real estate, two yard dating. Oh, two years dating. In my example, I was assuming it was going to be a piece of real estate. It's not a yes or a no. It really depends on your guys' relationship. If things don't go, go well, are you guys going to be able to work together in a professional manner? And at the same time, remember, if you're married or not married, I never advise for both people to be on the mortgage. You can both be on the title, but I don't agree both people should be on the mortgage. You're allowed to have 10 um, conventional loans each. But if you guys are on the same loan, both of you lost the ability of one of the 10. So there's, there's no purchase. There's no really added value uh, unless you really have to do it. So if you can avoid it, I would actually say, yeah, both of you can own a property, but the loan should be only in one person's name. Then both of you will buy another property and the loan is in the other person's name. Now, certain factors can come into play, like you guys don't make enough money to individually buy it by yourself. So you have to combine your incomes together to justify the mortgage. Um, then it's a possibility that you should buy it together. But remember, if you guys are young, and even if you're not young, I would strongly suggest buying a multi-unit. Your first loan is the easiest. You should definitely try to get a duplex, triplex, or quadplex. Because the goal would be is that you live in one side, rent out the other side, and have the tenant cover the full payment. That's really the goal. I mean, I just did that right now with my office about uh, four or six months ago, something like that. I rented out half the, the, half the building. I've owned it for three, uh, four, four years, I think. And now after I don't need all the space, I rented out half the building and the rent that I'm collecting covers the whole payment. And that's because I bought well, did good remodels, and at the same time, the market went up a lot. I bought in a good area. So yes, if you uh, can work together together and have a good planning, uh, then yes, you can buy together. Hard to find deals in the current environment. Yes, it is very hard to find deals in the current environment. Uh, how I'm able to do it is I'm actually um, doing a lot of creative stuff. So one, I do a, I do a lot of Airbnbs. So that's why our profit margins are very high. Um, two, uh, I'm buying deals and I'm doing a ton of value add. I'm doing the type of value add that most people do not do. Uh, most people don't buy a property for a fourplex for eight, nine hundred thousand dollars and then invest another three hundred thousand into it because. The homes next door are selling for $1.5 million. So my logic is if I buy for 800, invest 300, I'm at 1.1 million. And then the, the house next door is 1.5 million. So that means as a fourplex, I should be worth at least 1.8 million. So in that logic, I'm, I'm going after a specific market that has few competitors and is very hard to execute properly. Like you're gonna be really good to be able to make it happen and to provide the quality of product to make the client happy. So we're able to do that and uh, that's how we're able to, to make our money. So you have to work on your skills and you have to be really fast because when a good deal comes up, I buy it within the first hour. You have to know your, your, your market that well.